Alright, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation a squared minus b squared is equal to 49. So to solve this, I'm going to use the property that states that if I have something in the form x squared minus y squared, this is equal to x plus y times x minus y. In this case, a squared minus b squared, a is x and b is y, so this turns into a plus b times a minus b is equal to 49. Now from here, I can rewrite 49 as 7 times, or sorry, not 7, 49 times 1. 49 is equal to 49 times 1, so that's true. And this I can rewrite as 7 times 7. Now, we obviously know that a plus b is going to be greater than a minus b. So keeping this in mind, this means that we can't, we can't rewrite a plus b times a minus b as 7 times 7, as 7 and 7 are equal. So this possibility is out of the way, and 49 times 1 is the only possibility here meaning we're going back to a, time, a plus b times a minus b is equal to 49 times 1. So because a plus b is greater than a minus b, we can say that a plus b is equal to 49 and a minus b is equal to 1 because a minus b, 1 is less than 49 and a minus b is less than a plus b. And this is also in the form another, a number times a number. So and notice how this is equal to a number times another number. So we can say that a plus b is equal to 49 and a minus b is equal to one. So what we have here is a system of equations and I'm gonna add these system of equations. a plus a is 2a, b and negative b cancel out and 49 plus one is 50. So I get that 2a is equal to 50 and if I divide both sides by two, these two cancel out and I get A is equal to 25. Now that we know that A is equal to 25, remember how we said that A plus B is equal to 49. So this means that 25 plus B is equal to 49 and B is equal to 49 minus 25, which is 24. So A equals 25 and B equals 24. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation X to the power of 12 minus one is equal to zero. So to solve this, I'm gonna first rewrite this as X to the power of six to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into x to the power of 6 plus 1 times x to the power of 6 minus 1 is equal to 0. So this gives me two equations. I get x to the power of 6 plus 1 equals 0 and x to the power of 6 minus 1 equals 0. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to rewrite x to the power of 6 minus 1 equals 0 as x to the power of 3 to the power of 2 minus 1 squared is equal to 0. <clears throat> so I can use this property again and get x to the power of 3 plus 1 times x to the power of 3 minus 1 is equal to 0. Now for x to the power of 3 minus 1 equals 0, I can, I'm going to rewrite this as x to the power of 3 minus 1 to the power of 3 equals 0. So I can use the property a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3 is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So this turns into a minus b times a squared plus a plus 1 is equal to 0. Sorry, this turns into x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus one is equal to zero, which gives me yet another two equations. So now I have x minus one equals zero, 
and x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. So for x minus 1 equals 0, all I have to do is add 1 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 1. And for x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0, I can use the quadratic formula. So by using it, I get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3i over 2. So these are two more solutions. And now we aren't done yet because we also have to solve these. So now I have x to the power of 3 plus 1 is equal to 0. And I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. So I get x to the power of 3 is equal to negative 1, meaning x is also equal to negative 1. So this is another solution. Now for x to the power of 6 plus 1 equals 0, I'm going to again subtract 1 on both sides. So I get x to the power of 6 is equal to negative 1. And if I take the sixth root, I get x is equal to 6 root of negative 1. which is equal to negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6. So now, the sixth root of negative 1 is, say, the We know that i is equal to the square root of negative 1, which is equal to negative 1 to the power of 1 half. So negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6 is the same thing as negative 1 to the power of 1 half minus something. So now 1 over 6, or I should say 1 half minus 1 over 6, is equal to 1 over 3. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 is equal to 1 half. We know this, meaning we have negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6, and this plus, or sorry, I should, 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 is what we can rewrite 1 over 6 as. Now, this is the same thing as 1 half plus negative 1 over 3. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So this is going to equal negative 1 to the power of 1 half times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 to the power of 1 half is the square root of negative 1, which is equal to i. So we get i times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3, which is the same thing as 1 over negative 1 to the power of 1 over 3, which is equal to negative 1. So I get i times negative 1, which is equal to negative i, which is my final solution.